Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about physical clutter. Do you wonder what is considered clutter? How do you know if you have too much clutter? What should you not do when decluttering? Learn how to clear physical clutter as we begin our month focused on frequently asked questions. Do you control your clutter? or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Hey everyone, the entire month is going to be focused on frequently asked questions about clutter. These are questions that people are looking for the answers for and inspired the month. There were a couple that surprised me, and my most favorite question will be the last one of the fifth episode this month. Five Tuesdays, so we have five episodes if you're joined up on the Patreon account. I decided for each episode, I'm going to do three questions each as I'm leaving 333 abundant. I mean, I don't think I could have had a better, you're in a numerology, angel numbers, check that out. I don't think I could have gotten a better address. And that's one thing I'm kind of bummed out about. Absolutely best address I've ever had. And it's interesting with 333, when it adds up, it's nine and endings and we're leaving North Carolina. This is my last week, less than a week. Life is crazy. I'm taking a mental moving packing break by recording the episodes. It's bittersweet. You know, I moved and have been in North Carolina, gosh, almost 15 years. Moved from Los Angeles in October 2006. Brought my house in April 2007, which is a huge deal. I could have never afforded a house out in Los Angeles. And I fell in love, met my husband here, became a cat mom here, started my business here. Also had some heartache and some other things happen. But as it's eclipse season, which is very interesting, which I didn't realize when all this was going down, it is bittersweet leaving. Although we're gonna have a little bit of heat this week, so that will make me happy because I absolutely hate summers here. I hate humidity. And so it'll be a benefit to go to a more temperate client in West Virginia. And so in honor of the 333 address, I'm going to do three questions. I also think it's kind of hard to absorb more than three questions. So that is what we're going to do. So the first question, what is considered clutter? If you've been a long time listener, you know, my definition of clutter is this. Clutter is anything that prevents you from creating the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Don't know if I've mentioned this or thought about word choice. I know I've done a little bit about that, but I chose those words very deliberately. And it's interesting, someone took my tagline and changed one word and changed the want, which has very different energy. And so I was very deliberate on using the word choose. Make that conscious choice. That's a much different energy from wanting. I've been saying this for a long time. I look at things holistically. The inner affects the outer. The outer affects inner. I want you to think more broadly about what clutter is and how it shows up in your life. If it's not important or doesn't matter to you, it's clutter. This year, past year, being with my mother has really showed up what's most important. My family, I've always said my family is what's most important and I put my money where my mouth is. All the rest, why not clutter, isn't important at the moment. And it's just insignificant at the moment. And just as life ebbs and flows, it's just how things go. So something might not be important to you in this moment, and that might change. Clutter is also the things you don't want, need, use, love, or like. It's the stuff you're saving for someday that you've maybe never worn, doesn't fit. Things that bring up bad memories. I can't tell you, I was guilty of this. It took me, someone gave me a wedding gift and we are no longer friends. And I tried, of course, give away, sell, whatever I can, but it was very 
unique. And so I just had to throw it in the trash, which on one hand killed me because I don't like to do that. But every time I would walk by this thing, it just conjured up the memory and it wasn't good. And there's some other things. And so what bad memories are you holding on to? Maybe it's pictures. Maybe you got a bunch of stuff from your ex. What is it that you were holding on to? Really take the time to think about what clutter you have in your life. Now, again, today we're going to focus on physical clutter. However, I want you to be aware of all the other clutter and how it's affecting you. For example, if you are jealous of someone, then one way that might show up is buying, buying, buying. And that creates clutter. Or you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Or you are trying to feel better about yourself. And so it's thinking about all those things. How is the physical clutter showing up and what's behind it? You know, awareness plus action equals change. The big step is becoming aware and then taking action for it. So if you understand more of the why behind your physical clutter, then you are going to be able to release it a lot more easily. And remember, it's individual. What is clutter to you might not be clutter to me. And if you're using it, it's not clutter. I think of that person that I used to work with who had a ton of crystals. I'm not exaggerating. However, she used them all. And so it wasn't clutter. And the space, you could feel the space didn't feel cluttered. Now you could have had someone who had less stuff, but if it's not being used, they don't really need it, there's a negative attachment you're going to feel that in the space. So take some time contemplating that. I'm also a huge fan of writing stuff down. It's why I created the journals, because you can get to pen and paper or electronically to think about things and then write it down. It makes it easier for you to take action. Every extra step, especially if you have clutter and overwhelm, help set you up for success. I was just asked this in this morning in an interview. So after you've contemplated where you'd like to change, here are some starting questions to think about. And again, the journals were really important to me because I wanted to give a starting off point for people to think about stuff. You know, you're just overwhelmed. Okay, well, here's some questions to get you started and then you can take it from there. So if you're contemplating, where do I need to start? Or I have physical clutter, I'm completely overwhelmed. Where are you frustrated? Or with your physical clutter, what frustrates you in your home or tires you out? That tire you out that there's a pile on the living room table that never seems to go away? What makes you feel sad? depressed or drained when you look at it? Is there something that's absolutely driving you crazy? If you ask these questions, then it's easier for you to discern what matters and what doesn't. Question number two, how do you know if you have too much clutter? It really is individual. Like there's no one best way to declutter your home, there is no set amount on clutter. There's no one set rule. You know, I mentioned a moment ago about the crystals. That former teacher used them all. And so it wasn't clutter. What I'm going to suggest you do is figure out what's your comfort level. I, although they're packed up, everything is packed up. I probably have, you know, I study the plant medicine and I'm finishing up all my coursework. That's my big goal before the end of the year. I probably have 20 plant teas. Now to someone who doesn't drink tea or isn't studying plant medicine, that's going to probably seem excessive and would be cluttered to some people. But I'm studying, I'm using, I'm learning. And so then it's not clutter. And again, remember the energy behind everything. It's not going to feel like clutter. I'm sure you've all been in a space where you just relax. Like I had a massage therapist in Los Angeles. And I met her because I was in a car accident and got this great chiropractor. And he said, Oh, I know someone in your area. And every time I'd walk up, she had a cute little fence around her house. I just would immediately 
start to relax just immediately felt really great. And so some would say that her massage room was cluttered. You know, she had massage oils, a bunch of different things. She's very spiritual. But for me, it didn't feel that way at all. It was the energy behind it. I felt completely relaxed. Ah, oh, I can take it down a notch now. I know I'm going to get taken care of. So I want you to also think about, because if, again, if you're using loving needing, your space isn't going to feel cluttered. And ask yourself how you feel when you're in that space. Do you feel like you can relax like I was able to with the massage therapist? Or does your space cause you to get feel stressed out? Do you feel energized or depleted by all of your stuff? If you had to move, and this is the second time in two years, so I feel a little bit of an expert on this at the moment, would you want to take all your stuff? Again, we've downsized a couple times and we're like, oh my gosh, how much stuff do we have? If you were starting from scratch, would you buy what you have now? How much time do you spend maintaining all of your stuff? It's an investment. If you don't maintain it, it collects dust. Or if you are a super awesome cleaner, you're still, still investing time to dust your stuff, whether it's every day or every week. What is that cost costing you? So think about it in those terms. Ultimately, only you know what works for you. I am going to err on the side of less is more. But not everyone feels that way. And again, you know, if it's something like the plant teas or the crystals, or if you're a book person and you honor that and that feels good, then that's fantastic. You have to think about it if it's you have numerous collections and collect everything or keep everything. And it doesn't mean being a hoarder either. There are areas in our lives where for instance, we might hold on to every letter written to us. I was reading about someone and I don't know, they're either, I think of, oh my gosh, I would have recycled it, but oh, you know, they became famous and I have this letter for them. And you hold on to it 20, 30 years. I don't know. That's just not for me. You know, I've talked about memories before and I have basically everything down to a container, not a huge container. I just, like I said, I mentioned my yearbooks. Eh, how often do I look at them? Never. Now, I still have the junior high ones, but again, it's a process, but I let go of all the high school books and gave it to someone that wanted it. Their basement flooded. They want it. Fantastic. Win, win, win. So you know what's best for you and start to ask yourself those questions. And again, I have that journal prompt book on physical clutter, which is why I did this to get you to think about these things. Overwhelm the stuff. Can't find what you need when you need it tired of wasting time and energy maintaining your mess longing for peace of mind get control of your clutter so your clutter doesn't control you reclaim time money sanity and resources physical got clutter 365 journal prompts supports you in clearing your physical clutter Free gift of purchase to support you even more in your journey to declutter your life. Question number three for today. What should you not do when decluttering? People are asking about this. Great question. There are definitely some things I'm going to suggest that you don't do that will help make the process easier, especially if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably overwhelmed. So these suggestions are designed to take the overwhelm out. And remember, I can get overwhelmed too. I do this for a living. So do not feel you're alone. Don't declutter when you're not at your best energy. I'm not a morning person, so I don't do it then. Occasionally, if I have to be flexible, absolutely, I'll do that. But I really stay away from doing anything super important that needs a lot of brain effort in the morning. I need a couple hours to wake up. So figure out what your best energy is and commit to doing it then. Another habit, follow others' rules and habits instead of going with your natural instincts and lifestyle, right? Marie Kondo is still super popular. She doesn't work for everyone. She wouldn't work for me. It doesn't make her wrong. Martha Stewart wouldn't work for me. I don't want everything labeled. That would, I just know. 
just no, it just doesn't work for who I am as a person. Here's a question I have asked before when giving presentations. So I ask people, how are your in the morning, your coffee or your tea set up in the morning? And some people be like, oh, you know, I have everything on the counter. Someone might say, oh, I've got a little drawer. Someone might say it's in the first, uh, like a lower shelf in the cabinet. All of those are correct because they do what makes sense to them and works what works best for them. So make sure that you're doing what works for you. Don't get caught up in your best friend, what she does or the latest and greatest. That's just going to ultimately it won't work because you'll go back to your habits. And so make sure you're doing what is best for you. Another no, no, don't do it when you're not in the right frame of mind. You know, my mom's dying. We are going to need to go through her stuff. I'm not doing it right after she dies. It's not the time and place. I will need to grieve. I have started the grieving process because she hasn't been my mom for about a year. She's not, you know, there are definitely my mom's there and there are moments, but not being able to communicate, not the active, social, fun loving. Some of that's gone now. And so I've been grieving for a while, but I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, let's clean up mom's stuff. We'll take some time. And when my dad asks for help, I will be there. But I'm not going to do when I'm grieving. It is not a priority and I wouldn't be in the right frame of mind. Now, it doesn't have to be grief. Maybe you're super busy at work. My husband has these periods where he does these, I guess, upgrades, updates, and he'll know it. And so that week he works a crazy schedule, like way too many hours, like enough for HR to say, what's going on? Or beep, 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 you know, you're logging in too many hours. Well, it needs to get done. And I wouldn't ask him to do anything then. If you have a lot of stress in your life, you know, we knew before we were moving, we decluttered, I decluttered. Actually, I'd started decluttered. I'd forgotten this because with the, when all the solar went down, you know, moved in May, to September, all that crap happened. And that January, so January, 2020, I was like, let's do another round. So when it came time to move and everything we're doing, and because I'd go up and visit my mother once a month, I'd take a load up. Well, we might as well. Let's make it easier. We'll know tomorrow. We got the shipping containers and got a couple of people helping and we'll see how much we can get in. Another thing that can get you stuck, not remembering what is important. If it's not important, it's easy for you to release. But if you don't know what's important, that makes it harder. That's when the indecisiveness comes in. That's when it can be more challenging. And so if you get really clear on what matters most, it makes releasing much more easy. Now, you know, one thing that comes up again and again, and that I always say to clients, trust you'll get what you need when you need it, because I might need it someday. That seems to come up a lot for people. So if you can get into the habit of trusting, you know, maybe I can borrow it. Maybe my, I can rent it. My neighbor might have it. You know, they're, instead of worrying, and that's, again, putting you in mental clutter and worrying and stress, trust you'll get what you need when you need it. Another mistake, I believe, is not visualizing what you want your space to be. I like visualizing, one, because if you, you know, cluttering is messy, you get dirty. If you visualize one that can help keep you going, you're like, oh my gosh, I can completely see this space and how awesome it's going to be. And then also, in addition to motivating you, it again goes back to, well, if this space is for X, then what needs to go in here? And that makes the decision a little bit easier and makes you decide, oh, this is what's important. So think about, it. do you want your environment to be creative? relaxing, entertaining. That's going to help you determine what to let go and what to put in there. And then you can say, oh, this is for entertaining. So all these jackets and stuff that I keep throwing in the living room, they've got to get out. They don't, I've got to create, maybe I'll get a, uh, not a coat hanger, a coat rack, a coat tree that will easily declutter and keep it out of my space where I want to entertain. No preparation. 
stitch in time saves nine. Understand and know what your priorities are. Gather all your supplies, have a plan. In the Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out book, the first I have five chapters that fo focus on decluttering physical stuff. And I walk you through a plan. And so the more prep you can do, it's going to make it easier on you. So anything you can decide, getting everything ready, blocking out time on your calendar. No, this is the order of everything I'm going to go in. I'm going to commit to a couple of hours. If I get stuck, here's my backup plan. Prepare as much as possible. As one example, you decide, okay, I'm going to clutter whatever. And then Monday morning, I'm taking the donation pile or I schedule to pick up so that you can't go back into the bags and try to save something. That's something that you can do beforehand that's going to save you headache down the road. And then finally, something that I see people also do is not getting support when you need it. If I had the opportunity, I would have hired someone to help organize my move. Can I do it? Absolutely. But the extra help would have been worth it. There is just just no one that I knew and I didn't have a strong enough relationship and I don't know you and I don't have, just don't trust that. And so because of that, I was like, oh, it's easier to do on my own. However, we have hired someone to come and help us. We're going to start loading tomorrow. So our friend and his teenage son, and I found this other guy who's also going to haul the couch off. I tried it's a nice couch. I can't believe no one wanted it. I had it for 25 bucks. And so his thing is he doesn't want it in the landfill. So if you can sell it, all good. If you can donate it to someone, all good. It's a win-win in my situation. So in different areas, I have to get support. When we get our containers unloaded, we're going to hire someone to move it out. It was important for me to get support, not just physically. I mean, definitely we need the physical help. My husband's very independent and strong guy. And he said to me this morning, oh yeah, I'm definitely, my dad said, I'm going to hire some guys to help you unload when you get settled. And he's like, yeah, I'm taking your dad up on that. Cause it's a lot, it's a lot physically. And he's got to work this week. And so anything that I could do for the support to help make it easier. And so if you need help, first of all, there's no shame. There are people like me that do this for a living. So whatever it is that you need support in, you know, maybe it's someone I've gone in and just done one session, gotten people started like, okay, it's kind of my block's gone. I can take it from here. Fantastic. Other people that need more handholding and guidance. And so if you've tried for a long time and you haven't been able to declutter or get organized for that matter, I encourage you get help. There are lots of options out there. You know, maybe you start off with a class or a book you know, our podcast that can support you. But if you're not moving forward from that, then that's time to call in reinforcements. So those are my thoughts on mistakes people make when decluttering. And there you have it. Answers to three questions today. Take actions from today's podcast. Realize what you consider clutter. Understand what is too much physical clutter for you. Be aware of mistakes you may be making when decluttering. Begin clearing your physical clutter. On our next episode, we're talking about how do you declutter when you're overwhelmed? Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.